Hey everybody, this is Jennifer Donnell, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you how I plan using index cards. This is my little index card holder. I've had two different ones. I like this one because the zipper is a little bit more well-made than my previous one, which the zipper broke because I use this all the time. And it's stored away in my purse so I can go places with it. It's in like on my kitchen counter, it's everywhere. So I use a little black holder, um, but I know people that um, do the whole index card system will have like a box on their counter sometimes, but I like this one because it's portable. This is part of the Sidetracked Home Executive system that I talked about in yesterday's video and many other videos that I've used. But basically what it is, is this little system, I have it all broken down because I've been trying to give it an upgrade lately because they're starting to look really sad. I've been doing this for the last five years. So just recently I added this little calendar to it because part of it is that you do this card system where you move things around. You have the dates all written out. Look how sad this is. <laughs> this is just on regular printer paper. So after five years of use, they're starting to like fold over. But usually the system would be on like real index cards that are a little bit thicker. And when I do my upgrade of this, the cards, I my plan is to use more of the cardstock type of a system rather than just having regular printer paper. So anyway, you have these dates all lined out on your cards. And then each card kind of gets shuffled between the days. And so what I did over the summer was just add in a card each month of the month's dates. And then like today, I have, I'll set up each month a little bit differently, but this month I have the days until Christmas so I can reference it and be like, oh, there's only eight days left till Christmas or whatever it is. So I have the month and then I have my goal card, which I don't really want to show you. <laughs> there's three goals though that I keep really focused that are like big long-term goals. If you're using the passion planner and it has the roadmap, those are my three like bigger ones. This week plan, as you can see, has gotten changed around in the last couple years. I think it was last year that I moved my um, heavy cleaning day over to Mondays, my free day on Tuesday. I talked about this again in yesterday's video. You can learn more about it. But in the new year, I do plan on moving my weekly plan around again um, to better fit how my weeks flow. And then you have your meal plan, which has basically stayed the same for us for the last five years. That's what you have at the beginning. So that's the basics. And then you have each month. The days are up at the front. You have your plans up at the top of every day. And then behind the days, you have your months. And this stores things, actions that you'll take on a monthly basis or a seasonal basis. You'll put them behind each month. So right now I just have it setting in January and I have it started so that the cards all sit towards the front. So all the actions are gonna be in front of the first. Everything you need to do on the first will be in front. Everything you need to do on the second will be in the front because as you go, you finish your the first, January 1st, you move it to the back of the cards. So same with the months. I think I might need to organize these better, but the same idea. All of your cards for the month of January are going to be in front of the month. Once January is over, you move it towards the back. So you have your months, your days, and then you have all these different actions of what you're supposed to be doing broken down into a monthly, um, weekly, um, every other week, every other day, you have them broken down into time frames. But before I go over the action cards, one other thing that I added last year was these daily cards. So that was a kind of an issue of when I brought in this card was that each day I would be going done or, or I'd be done with my actions. And let's say I was supposed to um, every week organize and clean the boys room, right? So I, when I was done with the first, I was supposed to move it to the next week. Well, I didn't always remember which date and it was too much math to figure out when the next Monday would be. And so I added in, and plus it's just a nice reminder, these days of the week's cards. And because I use this guy instead of a traditional box, I can have these tabs sticking out at the end. So they're a little bit smaller and then the tabs stick out at the end, which just helps me. And I'm still kind of playing around with this system, but it's worked so far. And this just gives me a reminder of what it is that I'm focusing on for the day. And then, um, and as you can see, they're not super pretty. They've been really well used. Um, and so these would then go, so say m the first was a Monday, 
Monday would go there, Tuesday on the following day. And then I reset these as the day goes by. And if for some reason, if I fall in behind, I just catch up and I'll move these around like on a Sunday night or whatever it is. And then you have your months. So each month you have a dates to remember. And this is part of the sidetracked home executive system. You have all these dates and you can go through and add them. I don't know why November doesn't have any dates. But these were done, these dates, this card, these cards were done. Not this year, but last year I wanna say because they're crossed off because I had my oldest son transpose them onto his little calendar at one point, which is why they're crossed off. Um, so you put all these dates here and it's nice because each year I kind of reference back to see what days we celebrated or what um, holidays and I can put them into my planner really easily that way. More dates on the back. As you can see, I started doing this calendar back then. It's funny. Anyway, so I have the days of the week or days that I need to put or importance on there. And it's good for reference and then you can put them into your planner too if you want to. So those will go in front of each month too. And then, before I get into the actions again, I have, oh, and I should like get on top of November. I don't know what's up with that. So the house has its own little section. And I think this is from Sidetracked Home Executive where you have home improvements or home renovations on one section. You also have like the ability to do children's chores. Um, there's a few other like little options. There's personal options or personal actions, which are in pink. Each of these cards is color coded. It doesn't have anything to do with my days of the week, which is my weekly color. <laughs> um, but each of these are color coded just for easy visualization. And so this is a personal item. Um, and that's kind of similar to these house items, which are in green. So the house items in green are, you're supposed to be working on these, and I have done a few of them so far, but these are bigger home improvement items, and this is something that I'm definitely gonna be tackling in the new year. Um, but basically, the same thing is going to be to apply to the other cards. It's just, the idea is that you can have these different, um, different categories all like set aside. You have the category name, you have a different color, and then you have the action. I'll go over that in just a second. So I've got my home improvement cards. I have had these just in the back of my planner stack, just like this. Um, I'm gonna change that in the new year. I'm gonna actually get those done. So going into the monthly. So you have monthly cards. And as you can see, I had this, like when I did these originally, I didn't ever like go back and correct them. I just like wrote over it in pencil and cross things off as you'll see. And as you go to, you make changes. So each of the cards has the um, activity that you're going to do, how often you do it, and then how long it's gonna take. And so the idea is that you could potentially delegate these too. So if you have a cleaner or you just, you don't feel well and you want someone else in your family to take up this activity, you're able to do that. So all my monthly cards, what I would do is go through these and determine when it was that I wanted to add these into my planner stack. So let's say I want family council in January to be towards the end of the month. I would look at the calendar once I have my planner card for January. I'd then figure out which day was appropriate to put the family council and I would file it under the appropriate date. Easy peasy. So I do that for every activity of the month. Now, um, there's also a section, I saw one had it here. So <laughs> this is the dreaded skipped corner. And I didn't type this out because I don't want my mind to think that I can skip them. But part of the beauty of this program is if you skip something, rather than continuing it the next day on your to-do list, which is my frustration with planners, is the idea that you have this checklist at the bottom of your planner and that if you don't get to it one day, you still see it there tomorrow and you're just like, ugh, I don't wanna do it. And you start to dread it because the next day, of course, you're busy and you don't necessarily have the same priorities. 
So if I skipped this, I've done this since then, by the way, <laughs> but um, it was skipped August 13th. Rather than putting this on my to-do list for the next day, I then would file it seven days or one week from that date to take that up on my next kitchen cleaning day. So I wouldn't necessarily have to do that or feel like I have to do it the next day. I am, my mind is clear and I know, okay, I'll tackle that next week. So that's one of the, like, the biggest perks to me of doing the system is this idea that you don't have that nagging feeling all the time that you're supposed to be doing something because all of those things have a, a date or a priority of when you're going to do it. Okay, so that's the monthly cards. And then we have also seasonal cards. So appointments, um, same idea. If you have certain like teeth cleaning, for example, the teeth cleaning items, you're not going to do every month. You'll do them a few times a year. And at that point, what you'll do is you'll just say like, I do this more than every six months, I think. But anyway, um, you'll have the seasonal, you'll have how often you do it, and then you have the activity and the explanation below it. And then you'll have any other pertinent information on that card and you're able to then instead of it's not something that you're going to necessarily be putting into the dates, but you can put it under the month that you'll be using it. So we've got our seasonal cards and again you have skipped. I've done this since then so don't worry. I just have to have an eraser near me to like update stuff. Okay. And then we have a daily cards and some days I actually use my daily cards, but for the most part, I've memorized this. I have this routine and a number of places, but it was really helpful when the kids were really young to just feel organized and feel like, okay, I'm going to go through the motions and get all of this stuff done when it needs to get done. And it's like set in an order too, which was helpful for me then. And this is from... Miracle morning. So you guys, I've tried to wake up at 5 a.m. in the past. <laughs> this isn't my first go round. Okay, so you have your daily cards and then you have your every other day cards. And then you have weekly cards and see like, I just cross things off. We don't have a playroom anymore. So I just wrote boys room. And then there's things like compost. I mean, it's just kind of messy and I'm going to be changing this around. So it's cleaner and more streamlined and it fixes all the little issues that I had with them before. And then you have the pink card, which is still a weekly card, but because it's pink and I had a lot of other things, especially when I was training for paddleboard, the paddleboard race, it had a lot of sup cards that were in pink that I was just able to do to know, okay, every couple days, I'm going to have a sup pink card in there that I'm going to do as my daily focus. And then you have every other week. So as you can see, I was cleaning the shower. It was taking me 45 minutes because I do it once a month. And these too, when I said this, this was guesstimates. And I found that when you keep up on these cards, whether it's for cleaning your home or doing any other like tasks that you do often, these times in your mind, you think, oh, it's gonna take me forever to clean my home. But it, in reality, it doesn't, especially when you've keep, kept up on things. So I definitely go through these and make changes on the times that are required too, now that I know. But again, um, this is part of Sidetracked Home Executive System and it has the explanation, how often you do it, um, how long it takes you, and then the color coding of the, the category that it's in, whether it's in every other week or if it's a personal or if it's your home. There's even cards for Christmas too. So I would definitely check out the book. It's been really, really helpful in my life. And uh, if you need help in setting up cards, let me know because I'm making new ones. <laughs> So I'm happy to share mine with you. So anyway, I hope everyone has had a great Christmas season. And um, if you're not being productive, I hope you're enjoying time with your family. All right. Thanks, guys.